Enterprise is calling all of our partners to action to make all affordable housing green within this decade by 2020. The next generation of housing is going to have to consider what are the economic impacts of housing at large and housing for that community? What are the economic impacts to the resident? Low-income families are being squeezed. We can't afford to wait. We need to provide lasting solutions that respond to the current economic and housing crisis in this nation, and green affordable housing can help us get there. Green housing is housing that has been designed and is being operated in a way so as to reduce its environmental impact on both the residents who live in the buildings and in the larger environment. The sector of society that is first going to become 100% all green is affordable housing. We have great examples of green affordable housing around the country. Over the summer of 2011, we convened developers in various cities just to hear what's working and to listen to some of the challenges that still exist for them to try and do what they want to do in the realm of green. And also to begin exploring what are those innovative solutions that seem to be taking shape and really get to 2020 successfully. My name is Chris Parr. I'm the Director of Real Estate Development with the Denver Housing Authority here in Denver, Colorado. So this project is 1099 Osage. From a building standpoint, the Denver Housing Authority has been pretty aggressive over the last few years. Green is obviously a focus when we approach any of our new construction activity. It's not just about building an energy efficient, beautiful building. It's really much more of a holistic sustainability approach that we're trying to apply. It's been exciting here with our South Lincoln redevelopment where we simply ask the question, how would your life get better? What is meaningful as far as life change beyond the unit? At a site such as this in South Lincoln, we're on rail. Obviously I have a bus circulator, bringing a bike share system. There's gonna be several multimodal solutions available to the residents here. So right now we're at our Benedict Park Place redevelopment. We are in our community garden. What we thought was just adding a small feature has turned into a very big amenity. My name is Joni Frasius and I am a resident here at Benedict Park Avenue. So this was my first time experiencing the garden on my own and it's been very beneficial. I'm enjoying it because it's been good meditation and it's been profitable to me to see everything grow that I planted. We're shooting for net zero. We're very aggressive on putting it into larger buildings and not throwing money at it to get it there, but we're getting there in a very organic, thoughtful way. My name is Bridget Halvey, and I'm the property manager here at Capuchin Apartments. To be the person that's actually here experiencing, processing these people and giving them the keys to their very first apartment in some cases, it's just, it's overwhelming. And there's people living out there that don't have those basic rights to have somewhere to lay their head at night that's safe. Well, Deanne was found at a bus stop and had nowhere to go. To be perfectly honest, I've, I've been on the streets. I mean, I've been homeless. I feel very proud to have this apartment. This is a beautiful opportunity. This is not something everybody gets every day. You know, when you get an opportunity like this, you're to feel blessed. This allows me every day to wake up and keep my mind fresh and stay focused and understand why I've been placed here. I just haven't been placed here to live. I've been placed here to succeed. I'm Stephen Anapit uh, with Methune. We're a multidisciplinary planning and design firm based in Seattle, Washington, uh, and we're at High Point. High Point today is 
close to 1,700 units, over 120 acres, and it's been a complete renaissance for this part of the city. Well, I see green housing is really just a piece of a healthy neighborhood development. It means efficient use of resources. It means energy efficient in terms of its operation. It means efficient use of land, which means compact. That also means that it's part of a neighborhood that's walkable, and that means that it's not just the structure that's efficient, but the whole lifestyle supports transit and walking and healthy living in an urban context. So in the redevelopment of High Point, thinking about water as a major consideration in terms of building a green community, on every street and along every sidewalk and from every parcel that you can see and that you can walk along, green space and the streets are part of the storm drainage system. This pond and the amount of land that would have been consumed for it if we didn't have that series of bioswales would be five times as large. We actually created land that we were able to sell as part of the for sale market rate portfolio to private builders. At this point, it's really seeing how the community has evolved and what's taken root here. This has become home for hundreds of families. It's been a place that is really rooted into West Seattle and has an authentic character. My name is Joanne Page. I'm the CEO of the Fortune Society. The new building is called Castle Gardens. Our goal was a beautiful green building for two reasons. One is for the health of the people who live here, but the other was to give a model and do it within a budget. We have a population that's really challenged in terms of health. It's a poor population. It's people who have histories of poor medical care. Our supportive housing population, our population of men and women coming out of prison, is overwhelmingly people with long substance abuse history. So we start with a population that's challenged in terms of health. What we wanted was a building that supports health rather than one that diminishes it. One of the green features in the building is a trickle vent. If you've got a smoker in apartment A, the asthmatic child in apartment B isn't breathing that smoke. We're using linoleum that doesn't have toxic fumes, cabinets that don't have toxic fumes. So what's happening is that the building doesn't add to the toxic influences that our people have been exposed to. This is a great feature having in the building, just for the communal space to be able to come up here. And it's weird looking around and realizing that you're in Harlem looking around and seeing no other green roofs, you realize how beautiful a space this is. It's really a treasure in the middle of Harlem. It's a good social investment in two ways. One is, in many cases, it saves money. In the other, it's an investment in having a healthy community. You can't have a city like New York where only the very wealthy can afford to live and still have a city that has the vibrance and the soul of New York City. Albert Einstein said that you can't solve a problem with the state of mind that created the problem. And shifting to from being a regular building developer to a green building developer, the most important thing one has to do is actually change your mind. You never really know until you jump in and try it. You just need to decide that sustainability and green building is who we are. Once you get started, like everything else, you'll take a step at a time and you'll realize that there are plenty of people around to help you to get it done the right way and that every step you take will be rewarded with a nice return to you and your tenants. People with little financial means have so much to gain. For them, a lower utility bill is meaningful. That is real money. That is more food they can feed their family. We have the solutions to create these amazing cities for the future, and we can get started on it today, and we need to. The affordable housing industry can lead the way on just rethinking the way we build and rebuild our communities.